The Dark Rock Elite was one hell of a cooling machine. In fact, it was the best we have seen until now. But what about the slightly lower tiered version? What about the actual successor of the Dark Rock Pro 4? What about the Dark Rock Pro 5? Because even if you can argue that it's hard to know which one is better, Elite or Pro, because both are like just huge buzzwords, actually Pro is the lower tier one. But the difference is actually just the fan. Heatsink wise, we are looking at the same 168 high dual tower all black heatsink. We still got that nickel plated 40 by 45 millimeter base and the same seven 6 millimeter thick heat pipes which are aligned one next to each other except the last two which are grouped together. So where is actually the difference? The first difference is the top cover. We still got it, of course we still, it's still magnetic, but now it's slightly different without any ARGB and only showing a silver Be Quiet logo next to the mesh. But that's not that much of a difference. Even if you start removing that stuff, it is exactly the same heatsink underneath. It even has those little holes meant to mount down the front fan. One of the towers is still 41mm thick and the other one is still 36mm thick. And the base still got that mini heatsink on top. No, the actual difference, performance-wise, is just the front fan. Instead of that permanently attached front fan, we now got a old-school 120mm Silent Wing 4. And that one is spinning at up to 2000 RPM. The one sitting in between the two towers, on the other hand, is now spinning slightly slower at up to 1700 RPM. And similarly to the Elite version, we also still got that speed switch at the top throttling down the fans to 1500 and 1300 RPM respectively in case you do not need all of that be quiet cooling power. Which I still don't recommend you do because fan curves are still a thing. Unfortunately, I can't really tell you anything about the amount of force or the amount of air that these fans push at. There are no Silent Wing 4s with a available spec sheet that spin at similar speeds, so we can only hope that the product as a whole performs well. And it freaking does. Letting the Dark Rock Pro 5 cool down 120 watts allowed the CPU to stay at a cozy 32.9 degrees C above ambient. This puts it 0.6 degrees C in front of the Nokia NHD 15 and at the second spot overall looking at all the air coolers we have tested so far. Very interesting here is the difference to the Dark Rock Pro Elite because losing that few centimeters on the right fan and some of the speed on both fans we are down by a full degree C, which is very interesting. Compared to the last generation, it's a completely different world. With all the little improvements, additional heat pipe and new fans, Be Quiet managed to drop the temperature by 3.8 degrees C under a low load. On the noise to performance graph, we can see that the generational improvements are really hitting hard here. Dark Rock Pro 4 versus 5 is just a different thing. Where the Dark Rock Pro, well, the, the 4, was okay before, the 5 or the Pro 5 is now the second best noise to performance king, even outperforming the Nokia NHD 15, which was sitting on that goddamn throne for a decade. Interestingly though, the positions do switch for a very short time where the D15 takes over for a single measuring point. But highs and lows are always on the Pro 5 side. Compared to the Elite, it's the same thing as in Brute Force. The Elite is in front of the Pro 5 for the whole damn time, which is just impressive to see what a few centimeters of fans and, and a bit of speed can do. At 250 watts, everything came closer together, but the hierarchy remained the same. At 64.3 degrees C, the Pro 5 is now 0.3 in front of the NHD 15 and 2.8 behind the Elite. But overall, still a very, very impressive position. Great job! And interesting. The noise to performance ratio compared to the D15 looks also very similar. At the highs and lows the Pro 5 is the winner, but for that one single measuring point the D15 picks over. And by the way the single point is at exactly 50% of the fan speed. Compared to the Elite, again, Elite is just better. Elite is Elite. And if you wonder where the Pro 4 is, it's this one single point. 
Yeah, Excel doesn't like to draw lines for a single point and at 250 watts the Pro 4 can only keep up with full blast essentially. 100% fan speed, if I even touch it, it goes beyond the no throttling point or be beyond like my, I feel safe to keep the CPU there point. So it's just a dot. And now to my arguably extreme surprise, the Dark Rock Elite is not the only cooler capable of keeping 320 watts going through the socket without allowing the CPU to go beyond 110 degrees C. With 85.5 above ambient, the Dark Rock Pro 5 managed just so to stay on that goddamn graph. This is truly impressive. The D15 is long gone at this point and so are dozens of AIOs. Surviving 320 watts is really all about having the most optimized base and somehow getting that huge amount of heat away from the CPU as quick as possible. And even if the Dark Rock Pro 5 takes the last spot on this list, this is a list which is really hard to get on. This is one a hell of an impressive achievement, especially because Be Quiet rates their own freaking cooler to pull max 270 watts. It can pull more. Compared to the Elite, we are looking at a difference of 2.4 degrees C. So there is where you can really see how optimized that base really is, because by enhancing the performance on the heatsink part with bigger and more powerful fans, the temperature starts to drop. So the base isn't at max load yet. Anyhow, it's, it's really good. Less good, however, is the noise to performance ratio, but that was kind of expected. Compared to the Dark Rogue Elite, the Pro 5 now becomes a single dot. Lower the fan speed just by an inch and the cooler is gone. In the very least, it survived 320, which I did not think I would see twice this year. I didn't even think I would see an air cooler be on the list for the next two years. But nevertheless, the Dark Rock Pro 5 is still an absolute performance beast. Miles ahead of the NHD 15, a completely different world than the Dark Rock Pro 4. Just a cooling monster worthy of being the second best cooler on the whole market as of now. With all of that performance talk, I kind of forgot to talk about the included stuff and mounting, so, so let's just dial a bit back here. From the outside, we got the same type of box as anything coming out of House Be Quiet. All black, a bit of imagery, and some spec sheets. Inside, we'll find the same stuff as for the Elite. The cooler itself, some thermal paste, installation hardware for all the nowadays important sockets, a manual, and the new all black Be Quiet screwdriver. To install this thing, Be Quiet treats us with the same godly mounting mechanic as for the Elite. For Intel, take the backplate and position the Intel screws on the right position before securing them down using the rubber ring on the other side. Outer holes for LJ1700 and inner ones for everything else. After positioning the backplate behind the motherboard, screw in the Intel spacers on top, followed by the brackets with the ends pointing inwards, and then screw everything down. Over an AMD, remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them by using the spacers followed by the brackets with the inner side leaning towards the CPU and then screw everything down. And before we continue, I cannot emphasize this enough really. The central mounting bridge, aka Mr. Depresso, is gone. And you can take the cooler, slap it on top and just screw it down without having to pay a therapist afterwards. It is so freaking enjoyable now. And to make it even more enjoyable, the central fan, which is mounted with that complete panel using plastic hooks, which arguably doesn't have the most convenient removal process involving some of that hard pulling, which, yeah, it, it doesn't feel nor sound particularly enjoyable. Let's just try it on camera here. Ah! But it goes in fairly easy. But out of the box, the central fan of the whole thing isn't hard attached to the cooler, it comes unmounted with some styrofoam in between. So you do not need to remove it from the cooler. You can install the cooler, remove the styrofoam and then install the bracket for the very first time without having to remove it in the first place, which is quite enjoyable. And the fans got that same convenient daisy chain feature with the single PVM cable coming out of them, just like the Elite. 
But unlike the Elite, the RAM compatibility is much better on here. By default, the right fan will be sitting about 38 to 40 millimeters above the RAM stick, so already a huge chunk of available RAMs will be compatible out of the box. But in case you still want to add higher sticks, you can always reposition the fan upwards and upwards and upwards until they fit. And at this point, another huge difference to the Dark Rock Pro 4. The fan clips now have something that you can actually grab to remove them, which is so much better than me somehow fiddling a, a piece of wire or a, a whatever in there and then pulling them out because you have nothing to, to grab. This is so much better. So where do we stand? It is truly amazing what Be Quiet managed to pull off going from, let's say, Dark Rock Pro 4 series to Dark Rock Pro 5 series, even including the Elite, which in my opinion is just like a Dark Rock Pro 5 Extra. This is so much better. This is so much convenient. It arguably, in my opinion, looks better, but that's up to you. But the installation method is now on the same level as like Noxua. But most importantly, it performs so much better, landing in the second best spot for the Docker Pro 5, the second best spot of overall air coolers now available, beating the NHD15, beating everything, except for its own elite cooler. Congratulations, be quiet, you are now competing with yourself. Have fun with that position. Price-wise, the cooler is supposed to retail for this price. And I'm not saying it out loud because I'm recording this video before I get the retail price. But by using the power of editing, it's a great price. Ignoring the price for a minute, it's the second best air cooler out there and beating everything except the exact same cooler with bigger and better fans. So from our side, it's an absolute recommendation no matter what price they put on it. Of course, I, I, I don't want to see 200 euros, but let's say they will slap 100 on them, then it's perfectly acceptable. I mean, Noxia charges more and this thing outperforms it flat out. If it's like 120, still acceptable, 130, it, it, it gets hot, 150, that's a bit much. But for today, this is going to be it for Be Quiet and that Dark Rock Pro 5. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Addition, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to create a naming scheme learning book for Be Quiet, because Dark Rock 5 Pro makes so much more sense. And, and they could have gone so much further with that. Dark Rock 5 Elite, Dark Rock 5 Pro, Dark Rock 5 nothing, I don't know, silent, whatever they want to put. Why is the number behind the, let's say, adjective? That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, thank you for watching, but if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 into 80. Funnily enough, that thing is being outperformed by the Elite at 250 watts, which is interesting. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Good job, Be Quiet. But now let's get to the really good cooler.